interesting and a welcome back. China aims for carbon neutrality by 2060. And wow, that's amazing. We've been concerned about India and particularly China being, you know, not caring at all about the amount of carbon and CO2 and nitrogen and just greenhouse gases that they emit and the, they don't seem to care at all how much they emit because all they care about is increasing the capability of their country. So seeing as they actually have aims for carbon neutrality, let alone by 2060, which is only 10 years behind the Western world, surely that is quite astounding. That's that's amazing. And yet, of course, I'd beg to differ that actually, no, it isn't. This is not a new thing that they've decided to do. This is actually quite in keeping with what they have done previously with the Paris Climate Accord, for example, which is that they will look at their predictions of what they will actually achieve just by doing what they're doing with the technological improvements, uh, particularly with nuclear power, of course. And then when they know what they're expected to actually do, they will posit that forward, they will propose it as their goal to say, yeah, we're going to have fuel emissions by this year. It's like, wow, how are you going to achieve that? It's like by doing exactly what we're doing at the moment, because we're on track to do that with no intervention or heavy-handed government whatsoever. And that's where we will go, because it turns out that nuclear energy is more efficient. So that's what we're going to be doing. Or if the rest of you guys are more concerned about wind energy or solar or tidal, then we're going to be manufacturing that for you because we're going to do it the cheapest. And therefore, we're going to keep the good stuff, the technological innovations that we create or steal from other countries as we tend to do. And we're going to find that to be more efficient and beneficial in terms of cost. And therefore, we're going to be doing that. And that is literally their plan, as simple as that. And they just rinse and repeat again and again and again. And for some bloody reason... This authoritarian regime, which is organ harvesting people, cracking down on their freedom of speech, removing their ability to find a place to live, to rent, to take public transport, for any of that, and also cracking down on religious freedoms, um, including, of course, the, the Uyghurs, which is the main Islamic population in the West, that they're being supported and propped up by Western media, particularly the BBC here. Which makes me think that the BBC, see, CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, communism, oh, we've got to support them then, because it's, it's clearly something worthwhile. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before they support North Korea as well, because they support democracy, and it's clearly the, a democratic country, because the, the clue's in the name. <laughs> but yes, that, that is how they decided to swing this. So as they say, China will aim to hit peak emissions before 2030 and for carbon neutrality by 2016. So 2060, President Xi Jinping has announced that Presidator, why do they call, still call him President? The elections are rigged and he's removed term limits. So he's dictator for life, but he's still President. So as Chris Chavel from China on Censor says, he's Presidator. Mr. Xi, <laughs> but they love that, Mr. Xi, outlined the steps when speaking via video link to the UN General Assembly in New York. The announcement is being seen as a significant step in the fight against climate change, which is utter bullshit. They're just doing what they are predicted to do anyway because it is most beneficial for them, not giving a shit about anybody else. And yet, yeah, good, good job, you're clearly making a worthwhile change. No, they're not making any changes whatsoever. They're doing what is best for them and them alone. China is the world's biggest source of carbon dioxide, responsible for around 28% of global emissions. They, they actually admit that. Yes, well done. Bear in mind that Beijing, just a few years back, when they had their Twitter feed, which was for the air quality to say um, how many ppm it was as um, parts per million, and to kind of give an estimation, say if it was clear, if it was a bit unclear, if it was bad, you know, however it was, that they had a little joke code in there which is if we got, I think it was over 500 parts per million, so if we got unsafe, according to the UN, they called it crazy bad, thinking that it's never going to hit that. But it did. <laughs> and so you got Chinese people waking up, particularly in Beijing, 
going, oh, what's the weather quality like today? It's crazy bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's a bit unsettling. So no wonder these people wear face masks because <laughs> bloody hell, it's not about them emitting a possible virus. It's because the air quality is so unclear from the smog that they can't bloody see anything. I mean, you can talk about low cloud or fog or mist, but when it gets to their level of smog, it's on a completely different level. It's on a crazy bad level. So you're not surprised to see lung cancer akin to chain smokers in these parts of China, given that that is basically what they're inhaling. So yes, for the rest of us, we might say, well, mm, climate change seems to be a natural change, and it's more to do with the Milankovitch cycles of the Earth around the sun. And yeah, you may very well be true. Uh, that, that, that could very much be correct. But also, I'm sure most of us understand that air pollution can be a problem, especially when it gets on the level of contracting cancer, lung cancer, on the same level as chain smokers, even if you never smoked a day in your life, that, yeah, it might not lead to global warming, but it's clearly having very deleterious effects on the inhabitants there. So well done, China, for saying that you're going to lower your carbon dioxide emissions. There are other greenhouse gases, of course, like methane, which is worse, or H2O, oh, the, the killer. Don't you know that people drown in H2O so much? That is the far more abundant greenhouse gas, but we're okay with that one. Water seems to be acceptable. <laughs> CO2, the thing that helps plants grow so that you can eat, especially for the vegans, and even for the people who eat meat because their meat eats the vegetables and the plants, that one's the bad one, the ones that helps plants grow. That's bad. And a warmer climate, bloody hell, the one that helps more plants grow in more areas around the world, easier to harvest, that, that, that's the bad one, that's the bad one. But the water, that's the good one. I, so, sometimes it makes you wonder how they <laughs> delineate between these, <laughs> but, but they have. So, according to the official translation, Mr. Xi went on to say, We aim to have CO2 emissions peak before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. Until now, China has said it would peak its emissions by 2030 at the latest, but it has avoided committing to a long-term goal. He's going to be dead by then, it doesn't matter. Emissions from China continued to rise in 2018 and 2019, even as much of the world began to shift away from fossil fuels. While the COVID-19 crisis this spring saw the country's emissions plunge by 25%, by June they had bounced back again as coal-fired plants, cement and other heavy industries went back to work. And they will continue to do that until, of course, they get their nuclear options off the ground, um, similar to... Hinkley Point, of course, in Britain. Thanks, thanks, China, and thanks, Conservatives, for selling us out as you tend to do. So, Xi Jinping's climate pledge to the UN minutes after President Donald Trump's speech is clearly a bold and well-calculated move, said Li Xiao, an expert on Chinese climate policy from Greenpeace Asia. It demonstrates Xi's consistent interest in leveraging the climate agenda for geopolitical purposes. Which is precisely correct. Yes, you were concerned you were going to be locked out because you released a pandemic on the world, and therefore you're trying to win favour back by stating goals that you were already on track to complete with no intervention whatsoever. So yeah, <laughs> jolly good job. You, you seem to be playing the Western media. So well done for that, I suppose. Back in 2014, she and Barack Obama came to a surprise agreement on climate change, which became a key building block of the Paris Agreement signed in December 2015, which is, as I alluded to previously, utter shite. Mr. Xi has delivered a surprise, according to Li Xu, which, I mean, it isn't really. They say China was moved ahead regardless of the US, will Washington follow? So like, you don't really need to, just keep doing what you're doing, and um, yeah, then you'll be on track as well. But because there's more transparency in the US, it looks worse. But you try delving into China's secrets, good luck coming back alive. It's bullshit. Really, it really is. But that is the, the state of play at the moment. So China is going to keep on china <laughs> And that's it. But as we got uh, Todd Stern, the appointed by Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, said, Today's announcement by President Xi Jinping that China intends to reach carbon neutrality before 2016 is big and important news. The closer to 2050, the better. His announcement that China will start down this road right away by adopting more vigorous policies is also welcome. 
This is what we call a useful idiot. Simply peaking emissions before 2030 won't be enough to put China on the rapid path needed for carbon neutrality, but overall this is a very encouraging step. Yes, we found nuclear power to be far more efficient. And if we're going to be using something like thorium instead of uranium-235 to create for plutonium just because of the warheads, then it's going to be even better. Something that has a half-life of 8 years instead of 400,000 years. Yes, you're going to be needing more of it, but the radioactive decay after it's expelled its use isn't going to be nearly as much of a problem. Seeing as we have no nuclear waste in permanent storage anywhere in the entire world. All of it is simply in temporary storage. But yeah, that's clearly a problem. But it's the way forward, so how about, instead of focusing on nuclear warheads, which is what of course America did in the 50s, we instead focus on the energy perspective, and we have more thorium plants instead of uranium plants. Sure, you can keep a few for your plutonium just for your mad, you know, your mutually short destruction, but you don't need the majority of them for that. Otherwise, you're basically going to have um, warheads that seem to be reaching their expiration date, and you're just going to be firing them off because, hey... What other use have you got for them? And that's not quite ideal for a peaceful, cohesive, global structure. And I'm not a globalist by any imagination, no doubt at all, but I don't think firing warheads at people is <laughs> a responsible thing to do just because you've made a bit too much weapons-grade plutonium. But, as always, let me know what you guys think down below. If you think that we are being swindled by China, or if they actually are really making a definite difference this time around, guys, can't you just trust them this time? This time, they're definitely trustworthy and going to help out the rest of the world. Definitely. Trust them this time, guys. Like, you know, communism, socialism, it's never worked before, but it will work next time. Just like China is definitely trustworthy this time, so you just got to trust them this time, guys. Or if you think... No, China's up to its same old tricks as it has done for decades now and has resulted in about 100 million dead, all, all things considered, um, using a fatal ideology. And the, this time around, it's, it's nothing new. They're going to continue doing what they're doing because the West really doesn't care because they're communist, at, at least in name, and they do have authoritarian speech restrictions, in which case they're going to be favoured, not least because they've also got a market of a billion people or a milliard, to use the English term, and therefore Western companies wish to ingratiate themselves to them because they don't want to be locked out of that market. Either way, let me know down below. Always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, until next time, have a good one.